I've been pulling tomatoes out of my grass for months now. I would say that that's a fusion. I've just got to pop one in. Look how they're tumbling over the raised garden bed there. Grass started growing up through the tomato plant. I thought that's kaputs, but not to the contrary. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and you might think on first inspection that this here is a pile of rubble that is just grassed and weeded over. Well, if you think that, you'd be mistaken. This is actually a secret experiment that I've been conducting to grow tomatoes the lazy way. Flopsy all over the place in the grass and it's working a treat. Oh, I can't lie to you. All right, yes, it's a pile of rubble that I just left get weeded and grassed over. It was put there by a backhoe when we did the drainage for my shed so that my shed wouldn't get flooded in. But out of that sprung these wonderful tomatoes. And this is a small one. And I thought, well, if they're gonna self seed in that rubble pile, let's see how they go. Because why garden hard when you can garden easy? And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. The most easiest way to grow tomatoes without staking them or putting them along a trellis. Let's get into it. I've been pulling tomatoes out of my grass for months now. And yes, I did say grass. Can you see that? Good size. I think these are a Tommy Toe type variety. Really big Tommy Toes and excellent eating quality. Look at them digging down into the lawn here and I'm pulling them out. Just completely covered and hidden by grass. This plant started up here. The top of this mound. The origins are around here somewhere and then it's just cascaded down the hill, wound its way into where the lawn is. And of course, when you're doing the mowing, you couldn't mow over the plant. So we just mowed around it and the grass started growing up through the tomato plant. I thought that's kaputs, but not to the contrary. The tomato plant just grew better and better. It confirmed for me something that I'd been noticing about healthy tomato plants. You know, plants that are growing really well tend to produce more and better fruit regardless of staking, trellising, or even pruning off diseased foliage. And even if the percentage of fruit damage is slightly more than traditional growing methods, this way of growing without any maintenance might be totally worth it when considering time and effort. Well, it certainly has been for me anyway. Let's harvest a few more of these so I can just show you a bunch. All right, these are just a few of them. There's probably, I reckon, maybe 30 ripe ones at the moment and more coming on. Look how beautiful and rich they look. There are some issues and I want to discuss them because it's true that if you let tomatoes flop, the fact that some of these are hidden in the grass means that they're over ripening and they're starting to open up or starting to rot because simply just leaving them and see this splitting, that splitting is extra water. We've had a bit of rain and because they're in a mound and I haven't been paying attention to them, they haven't got consistent water. And so they would grow to a certain size and then sort of be a bit in a bit of a drought. And then when it rained and you got plenty of water, that water would get into the tomato and cause a swelling faster than the tomato can grow. And that causes the splitting. The other thing that can happen, and it depends on the area you're in, is that if you let tomatoes just flop on the ground, and this is the reason why most people, including commercial growers, let them grow up and trellis them and stake them or twine them upwards. If you live in an area that might have a lot of, say, pests, could be slugs and snails, where they hide in the lawn or the grass or in low, damp areas, they can come out at night 
and easily get to the fruit and chew holes in it and they'll chew even on the green fruit that is a problem however if you live in an area like us that doesn't have a lot of those creatures well then you can get away with it all over this pile are tomatoes that have self-seeded i don't know where they came from i'm keeping the seed i'm drying them out in the shed they're a real good tasty tomato and i want to regrow them on purpose next season one at the top here that is just sprouted one over this side here oh that one's a little bit different what's the go here interesting i would say that this one see how it's odd shape i would say that that's a fusion because it's an odd one and you've got a couple that have fused together on pollination or how they were growing or it's a, a cat face or it just hasn't pollinated properly so it's an abnormality it's not a new tomato variety but it's a similar cherry tomato maybe smaller than this one and then there's another one on the other side right here that looks to be again another similar type here you've got that splitting there but that's fine to eat so this mound is covered in floppy tomatoes. We call it Tomato Hill. Hey, do you remember my tomato sauce video that I did, I think it was last year or the year before, on using 1,000, I don't know, 572 or something tomatoes to make tomato sauce? Well, this is it here. Again, I've just let this tomato plant flop over. No staking at all. This is a rootstock tomato or a mini tomato. It's the type of tomato plant that they use to graft other tomato plants onto because of its vigorous rootstock. It's self-seeded in this garden bed. We've been growing it on our property for years and they just come up naturally. And of course, if it's in the right position, I will happily let it grow. In fact, I've just got to pop one in. Mm. Small tomato, big flavor. Stop admiring those cute mini tomatoes and follow me down the back here. Come on. Oh, crikey. Don't do that. How'd you get down here so fast? That scared me. Don't do it again. Over here, it's a bit overgrown, but you can see these plastic forest garden beds. They're from plastic forests. They use recycled. You've probably seen them before on my channel. I did have some pumpkin and I was leaving them rest a little bit. And of course, up popped some smaller or medium sized cherry tomatoes. They're a, a mix between the larger Tommy Toe and the very small ones. They came up into these plastic garden beds and I've just let them flop over. Initially, they just flopped down here into this space. We we're just picking the tomatoes as normal. But then you can see up here, they've started scaling and climbing themselves. It's odd, isn't it? How a tomato vine Although it has no tendrils on the vine, so it's, it's not a great climber. But if it has something around, it certainly can climb. And that was another lesson for me, that tomatoes left to do their own in a lazy way can pick themselves up off the ground and do a bit of climbing. No tying, no pruning, none of that work stuff. Just let it do its own thing. So perhaps if you do just bung a structure or grow it near a structure nearby, you might get a result like that and get some extra tomatoes growing up. And the last Flopsy tomato experiment I want to show you are these tumbler tomatoes, appropriately named, aren't they? Because they're just tumbling over. Look how they're tumbling over the raised garden bed there. This was premeditated. The tumbler tomatoes were planted all in a row here at the back of these eggplants that are staked. And you can see there are several stakes here that were going to be for these tomato plants. But I never used them. I never grew them up because I thought, you know what? Let's just see if they do tumble. Yes, they're all dying now because it's just getting way too hot, especially for this particular variety of tomato because they were purchased from the store. The seed isn't as adapted as some of our other tomatoes that are doing better at this time of year. But nevertheless, it's a great example of how 
we didn't even bother to use the stakes and we got a really successful crop without having to lift them up off the ground. I know the optimal way is to grow tomatoes in cages or on a trellis or stake them, but I reckon there is some merit in growing them the lazy, floppy way, like in a mound or just let them flop over a garden bed. And you know, I've got several other ideas on how to break my legs. This is a bad idea. On how to grow tomatoes in a lazy type way. Sorry, I just had to concentrate a little bit. And I'm gonna show you these ideas our next tomato season. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big lazy thumbs up and share the video around because that helps out heaps. Also subscribe if you haven't already. Go to my website, selfsufficientme.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.